All right, switching gears now. Join me this time from Washington, D.C. is Archbishop Ned Council. He's a founding member of Project 21 and chairman of In God We Trust. Archbishop uh, Council, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me on. Our, our pleasure. All right, of course, the one, there's, it's one tragic story after another, uh, uh, Archbishop. We, we have the beheading in, in the Middle East yesterday, and, but the other story, of course, is in Ferguson, Missouri. Now, I, I have to say this. Uh, Eric Holder is calling this case extraordinary. He has sent over 40 FBI agents to Ferguson to interview people. Hundreds of people have been interviewed. Uh, Eric Holder himself uh, has headed to Ferguson. I need to say, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why this is about race. I don't understand why this is extraordinary. The news today is that uh, there are eyewitness accounts that it's been confirmed that Michael Brown uh, physically beat the police officer while he sat in his car. The police officer has a, has a fractured uh, eye socket. I don't understand why a government official like the, uh, like Eric Holder is making this other than what it is. Am I wrong? Well, you know, for the attorney general to go down there, I have to think it's politically motivated. That's where all the cameras uh, from around the globe are focused right now. And so, of course, he wants to be there with them. Um, you know, you're absolutely right, though. This is tragic all around in every single step. Um, you know, it, it, it's simply horrible. But, you know, I think one of the interesting things for me is that, you know, one of the things we see coming out of this is people are trying to make it about race, but I actually, I think this is, there's an opportunity here for some unification, but it's not really happening. You know, because there are lots of people on the left and the right and white communities and black communities that are concerned, um, fear, and I think, or rightly so, are concerned about the militarization of the police. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's a huge issue. And it should be, that should be just one of many unifying themes in this issue. The other thing that you, that's going on right now, or absence of, uh, that we're missing, is, you know, you've got, you know, obviously the Jesse Jackson, the Al Sharpton, they come down there, they take pictures, stand in front of the cameras and do what they do. Um, occasionally you'll see photos in the background on CNN of some pastors praying, but you know, you've got somebody who can draw national attention like Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, and what are they doing? You know. They're playing politics rather than saying, you know what, let's call for prayer. You know, at this time, more than any other time, uh, people need to be praying together and praying for the same thing. Um, for peace, for unity, um, and for cooler heads to prevail. And nobody's doing that. Jesse Jackson tried to raise money off of this, to make your point. Oh, I know. It, 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 it's absurd. It, it really is absurd. It's just petty and tacky, and it just tells how exploitative they are of every situation that arises. In, in, in the sad reality of this, I don't know if I, I, I don't know if you're going to agree with me, but the sad reality is, had Michael Brown been uh, Hispanic, had he been Asian, had he been white, uh, Eric Holder would not be there. As a matter of fact, something that is not making the news, yeah. something that's not making the news, uh, uh, Archbishop, it was called to our attention by a viewer in Sarasota, Florida. We looked into it, and it's and it's it's accurate. A 20-year-old young white man or boy, 20-year-old boy uh, named Dylan Taylor, was shot and killed last week in Salt Lake City, unarmed, unarmed, by right. a black police officer. Where's Eric Holder? Right. Well, precisely. There, there's so many issues. And every opportunity that people have, and I say people, I mean the politicians. I'm, and I'm literally calling them politicians as opposed to leaders because they're not le showing leadership, they're playing games. But every opportunity that the politicians have to demagogue an issue, they do it. Rather than standing up for what's right, they stand up for what's politically expedient or what's going to gain them some political capital. You know, I come from a, a family of police uh, officers. My dad was a policeman at, for 30 years in D.C. and Montgomery County, Maryland. Um, my older brother was a cop, and, you know, my best friend was a cop. And, you know, it's just fascinating to hear them talk, hear people I know who have been in law enforcement for a long time talk about the way things have just sort of radically changed. You know, if somebody pulls a knife on a policeman, you know, you hit him with the, the nightstick. You don't necessarily need to shoot him. You know, and I understand that... The goal is, at the end of the day, for everybody to go home. But, you know, there's been a huge change in the ethos of the way police not just treat black people, but in the way police treat everyone. Um, you're either on one side or you're on one side of the line or you're on the other. And uh, the police 
tend to, in my opinion, tend to view everybody as an adversary. You know, we saw it in Nevada, we're seeing it again um, in Missouri. I agree with you, and, and, and you're right. That should be the unifying cry here, uh, the, the cry out for, uh, uh, for help, yeah. if you will. Uh, here, here's a story which I've told on the show previously. I'm going to say it again because it plays to your point. A few years ago, I was speaking at a Tea Party rally in Southern California, and we learned afterwards mm -hmm. that, that uh, law enforcement had a weapon on, on the... Uh, had a crowd control weapon there from the battlefield in Iraq that the, that the local sheriff's department had purchased that could burst your eardrums. And we said, this is ridiculous. It's militarization of our police force, the point you are making. And we were called radical extremists, far right wing, you know, dangers. But the militarization of the police force affects all people, black, white, purple, green, or orange, Republican, Democrat, none of the above. And that's the point you're making. Now, I, I know that I, I, this may be a, a unfair question to ask, but I'm gonna, I'd like to get your opinion on this. Go ahead. Um, all right. If you watch the mainstream media, What's happening out there is a narrative that the vast majority of black people in America today uh, feel as if uh, they're th that uh, they're getting a short that, that institutional racism still exists. Institutional racism, particularly in the way they're right. polluted, uh, they're, the way they're treated by police officers, and because right. of that, that's what we're seeing today. Do you feel? that in America, that the vast majority of black people share those feelings that we're watching the protesters in Ferguson, Missouri uh, project? You know, that, uh, it's an interesting question, but it goes back, I think, you know, I, again, I question the premise and I question the, the person who's posing that particular question in that way. Uh, I think it makes, again, it, it makes for good headlines on the news. Yeah. I think it makes for a good, um, pulpits for um, some pastors to stand up and make some hay out of it. And I think it makes for a good bully pulpit for, for pol politicians to stand up and talk about, regardless of what side you're on on this issue. But the fact of the matter is, there are disenfranchised people in America. There are disenfranchised blacks, there are disenfranchised whites, and there's more common ground between those two than a lot of people realize. And there's people in the middle who um, are sort of propagating and um, the differences be, uh, between those two groups and trying to draw a separation where there doesn't really necessarily need to be a separation. Yes, there are dif disenfranchised right. um, blacks or disenfranchised whites, they're disenfranchised Americans. We, we have to leave and it right there. That's the way we need to be focused on this. We, I agree with you. We have to leave it right there. Archbishop Ned Council, thank you for joining us. Uh, there was a time in, in this nation we called that group that you just referred to as the silent majority. I believe they will step up in November. They don't like what they're seeing, black, white, purple, green. They don't like what they're seeing in Ferguson. And they will step up at the, at the uh, ballot box in November. And uh, those politicians exploiting this will pay the price. Al Sharpton continues to stir the pot in Ferguson. Is he using...